the misinformation, unfortunately, is what gets the biggest headlines. And one of those things is car vehicle fires when it comes to electric vehicles. And I keep getting this. Every video I post, they bring this nonsense up. And I'm just letting you know you sound stupid and dumb to me. I can't say that again. Can I call people stupid? No, I can't. Let me edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> hello everyone welcome back to my channel hope you have another great day today well today we're going to be talking about batteries and battery fires because that seems to be a great topic of discussion in my in my comment section i get numerous of comments from people talking about battery fires and my car is going to blow up and my house is going to burn down, and that's the reason my home and owner's insurance is so high, which is kind of news to me. But, um, but it seems to me that the people who know the most about electric vehicles are the ones that don't have any experience with electric vehicles. Let me say that again. The people who seem to know the most about electric vehicles, like my insurance costs and battery fire risk and how long I'm at charging stations, how much it costs me to charge my vehicle, and all these other things. They're experts. But they cannot even identify an electric vehicle. They may be able to point out a Tesla, but uh, yeah, they don't know what a Rivian is or any of these other vehicles. They probably can't tell the difference between an internal combustion engine vehicle and an electric vehicle. So, so this is just my advice to anyone who's considering getting an electric vehicle. Uh, maybe you want to listen to people who actually have experience uh, with electric vehicles versus people who have zero experience. For example, uh, say you're thinking about taking a vacation to Europe and you had a person that frequently visited Europe, maybe had a second home in Europe, and you had another person that never left his hometown. So if you needed information on what it was like to travel in Europe, would you go to the person that never left their hometown or the person that actually has experience in a second home in Europe? I'm sure the answer is quite clear that you're going, hopefully you're going to listen to the person that actually has experience uh, living in Europe or either traveling to Europe versus someone who never left their hometown. But the problem is when it comes to electric vehicle, we have people who are doing the latter. They're listening to people who have zero experience with electric vehicles and it's just mind baffling to me while you just have no idea the people are coming at me with all this advice who it's clear to me you have no idea what you're saying you have no idea what you're talking about it's almost as if i'm having a a toddler trying to tell me uh that two plus two equals two million and i'm supposed to take their word for it that's what it's like I mean, it's very easy for me to tell and any person that owned an electric vehicle or any period of time that it's easy for us to tell that you have no clue what you're talking about. And we just kind of laugh on the inside. I laugh at a lot of these comments because they're so, um, how can I put this nicely? Uh, nonsensical and void of experience or knowledge or logic in a lot of cases. It's just it's, it's entertaining, but at the same time, uh, unfortunately, these loud voices are the ones that's getting out. And I just uh, would like to challenge some of you just to, you know, maybe question some of these people about their actual experience with electric vehicles. I watch a lot of videos. I try to consume information from all different sources so I can kind of get an idea of what, you know, what's what some of the real issues are. And there are some real issues. There are some real issues buried in with the misinformation, but. The misinformation, unfortunately, is what gets the biggest headlines. And one of those things is car vehicle fires when it comes to electric vehicles. And I keep getting this. Every video I post, they bring this nonsense up. And every time I see this propaganda in my comment section, I just assume it's someone from the industry is going to have a that's going to be negatively impacted by the transition to electric vehicles, mechanics, um, car manufacturers, you know, anyone working in an assembly plant because electric vehicles require about half the amount of labor. So that can be in a lot of jobs being gone. Uh, any people in the oil industry, uh, that could be billions of dollars of profit losses. So I, that's what I assume it is. I mean, it would make sense uh, because 
if I was in a position to lose my job or lose my livelihood, I'm going to fight against it. And so from that aspect, I can understand what they're doing. But at the same time, uh, you as a possible consumer or a purchaser of an electric vehicle, you need to be aware of what this misinformation is and and what some of the motivations behind this misinformation may be. Some of it is just out of not knowing. You know, people just heard things and they never have taken time out to research it. But that's what we're going to do here. We're going to actually research some of this stuff. What we're going to do right now, we're going to look and see if we can find anything that supports the claim that electric vehicles are more prone to fire than gas vehicles. Now let's go ahead and get into this. Okay, I have Google pulled up. And here is the claim I put in here. Electric vehicles more likely to catch fire than gas vehicles. And we're going to go right here to this first article here, Autoblog. And we're going to read this. It just says, it turns out the EVs are actually much likely to catch fire than other types of vehicles. Uh, all data shows that EVs are, are just much less likely to set fire uh, than their petrol equivalent. Okay, we're not going to go on. That's an Autoblog. I'm not sure how valid that source is. Let's go to Kelly Blue Book and see what they have to say. And right here we have this article that's dated a uh, November 24th of 2023, so it's relatively recent. And we're just going to go here. You got burning burn in a blazing car right here. Yeah, baby. Okay. And I did have one person question me because I bring this up in, in a lot of my videos. and But this is the first time I'm kind of diving into it. That uh, there's like, well, the source you used before is not a valid source. And I just, I just, I did just use one source, but I know that there's multiple sources. And we're going to talk about that right now. Okay, right here it says four data sources. Examining data from Tesla's global fleet, Australia, Sweden, and Norway, the country with the highest concentration of electric cars, the paper found the probability of being caught in the EV fire appear, appears overall to be much lower than for petrol or diesel cars. The Guardian allows that the number could change as more people start to drive electric, which is absolutely true. As we get more and more people in electric vehicles, it may turn out that the, the claim is true that electric vehicles are more prone to fire, but there is nothing right now to suggest that. And down here it says, in Norway, research found, there are between four and five times more fires in petrol and diesel cars, according to the Directorate for Social Security and Emergency Preparedness. The Swedish Civil Contingencies Agency similarly found 68 fires per 100,000 cars of all types, with just 3.8 fires per 100,000 EVs or hybrids. Australia Department of Defense researched the same question and found that there was a 0.0012% chance of a passenger electric vehicle battery catching fire, compared with a 0.1% chance of an internal combustion engine car. So here it is again. This is from multiple sources from multiple countries. Uh, the most importantly being Norway, since they do have the highest concentration of electric vehicles uh, versus petrol cars or gas cars. And so multiple sources saying the same thing, coming up with the same findings. Okay, let's go on and see if we can find anything else here. All right, let me see. The Guardian Electric Drive Colorado. I mean, yeah, right here, Drive Electric Colorado, Myth Busters, EV Catch Fire More Than Gas Cars. Okay, that's a, uh, Energy5.com, Electric Cars Catch Fire More Often Than Gas Cars. Oh, let's see this. Okay, let's see what they have to say here. Uh, electric Cars Catch Fire More Often Than Gasoline Cars. Oh, oh, too bad. Right here it says Myth. <laughs> So they had me tricked. I thought they had something good for me, but right here it says myth. Electric vehicles catch fire more often and are more dangerous than gasoline vehicles. The myth has been dispelled. Just as your gas car can catch fire, so can an electric vehicle catch fire. And right here we keep going down. And it says, bottom line, electric cars are generally safer than petrol and diesel cars, but they're not risk-free. Electric car fires can occur due to a variety of reasons, including overcharging, physical damage, and manufacturing defects. So yes, electric cars, they're prone to fire also, but they're less prone to fire than gas cars. And that's the thing that people seem to not understand. Both petrol and electric cars pose a fire risk. But as you see, those risks are very, very low. In fact, I don't know if you know this, and a lot of people don't know this or maybe make this connection, but the thing that 
people are concerned with the most in electric cars is the lithium ion battery. But let's think about this for a minute. Where else is that battery? A lot of people keep these batteries on them all times of the day. They have them in their hands. They have them up against their face. They sleep with them. And yes, your cell phone has a lithium ion battery in it. The same type of battery material and chemistry that is inside your inside of an electric car. And so if you're so concerned about electric vehicles catching on fire, you should have that same concern about your cell phones and laptops and any other device in your house that may have a lithium ion battery. And there may be quite a few. And so I just want you to keep this in perspective. And I'm just going to show you a couple of videos here where you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So in a shocking incident in the Indian state of Kerala, an eight-year-old girl was killed after a mobile phone exploded in her hands while she was watching videos. The incident happened in Kerala's Trishur district, and according to reports, the girl was in fact using the mobile phone at about 10.30 p.m., when it suddenly exploded, killing her on the spot. Check this out. Chaos inside a local store after a phone burst into flames. It takes a lot for it to explode. Tonight, in a live report, the simple things that will keep your phone from becoming a ticking time bomb. You can see how warped this battery is from heat damage. It came out of a phone just like this one, but after that heat damage, you can see the battery itself is almost as thick as the phone, and while this one didn't explode, it could have been a close call. It takes a lot for it to explode. This explosion and fire didn't happen in Paul Tartaglio's shop. It happened in another Las Vegas phone store, but the owner of Gadget Repair says heat damage leads to lots of problems with cell phone batteries. Over time, those batteries can swell up with the heat. A family says an iPhone exploded, setting fire overnight while five kids were sleeping upstairs. To see a video of it actually going up in flames like that was, was crazy. It, it was pretty scary because we always have that counter a mess with schoolwork and books. And we had, uh, Jen had just luckily cleaned it off the night before. Just suppose I told you that your cell phone has a greater chance of catching fire than your electric vehicle. What are you going to do about that? Would you, are you going to put your cell phone outside your house? Are you going to start charging your phone outside? Uh, because your phone can blow up in your house. Your cell phone is probably in your house, probably sitting on your desk, a wooden desk perhaps, among some papers, around, uh, around combustible material. Are you going to charge your phone outside? Are you going to say, hey, uh, is your homeowner's insurance going to go up because uh, you have cell phones and laptops in your house? It's the same thing. Now, are you increasing the risk by introducing an electric vehicle? I will say yes. Anytime you can increase the numbers, that's just increasing the probability. And that's just the way the numbers work. Uh, but those risks are still inherently low. Now, can it cause a lot of damage if it does catch fire? Absolutely. Lithium-ion batteries can be very potent. Uh, they can they don't even need oxygen to to keep burning and then it, once it gets into a thing called thermal runaway it can be way hotter uh, than a con internal combustion engine fire which may burn up 500 degrees while the lithium ion fire may be burning at 2500 degrees and yes fire departments have difficulty putting them out and where a, a gas car may require only 500 gallons of water a lithium ion fire can need 30,000 gallons of water, the same amount of water as going into a swimming pool. But there are new techniques that are being developed uh, because anytime you have new technologies, you have to come up with new ways because it's going to create new problems. And it creates opportunities for people to come up with creative designs to tackle these problems, to come up with 
solutions, uh, which one of those things is fire blankets. And I'm gonna show you a little video on fire blankets. Once firefighters knew that an electric vehicle was involved, the hazardous materials team responded to the scene. Those apparatus are equipped with a specialized electric vehicle fire blanket, which is used to smother the fire. When the blankets arrived on scene, A South Metro Fire Rescue pickup truck was used to pull the burning electric vehicle out of the garage and onto the driveway where it was safer and there was less of a risk of the house catching on fire as well. <laughs> Under the protection of a charged hose line, our firefighters in their full protective equipment and respiratory safety equipment applied that blanket. Okay, electric vehicle blanket is carried on each of our hazardous materials units. There's one that's stationed in Cherry Hills Village, one in Highlands Ranch. So geographically, they can reach um, across our fire district in a, in a very quick manner. Those blankets cost anywhere between $3,000 and $5,000. And the one that we are using here at South Metro weighs 62 pounds. So it's a very heavy blanket. It takes at least four personnel to put it on the vehicle. They're using respiratory protection while they're doing that so that they're staying, staying safe and making sure that their airways are protected from that toxin. And the blanket itself is really just being used to suppress the ability for oxygen to get to the fire so that the fire cannot free burn. Once the blanket is applied, the scene is relatively safe and th at that point our responders can take the time that they need to to make sure that everything inside the house is okay, that there was no fire extension, and then work on removing those vehicles. Once the vehicles are at the salvage yard, they remain underneath that electric fire blanket, which is limiting the oxygen flow to the battery, which is still smoldering. The idea is that it's preventing a fire from spreading and it's preventing open burning. And eventually that battery pack will cool down to the point that the fire will just be extinguished. Some people might be wondering why we don't just use water on that, like a normal vehicle fire, a combustion engine fire. And it's because it's ineffective. It's very difficult to get the water where it needs to to go into the battery pack and when those lithium ion batteries are in a thermal runaway situation it can take tens of thousands of gallons of water to extinguish them even in that case if it does extinguish them now we've created a bigger hazardous materials incident with the runoff water. There's also a risk that even after water has been applied and successfully suppressed the fire in that moment that those batteries will reignite later so the safest thing that we can possibly do take the vehicle away from anything that could possibly burn and where it could hurt someone and leave it under that blanket until it's cool enough and the fire is 100% out. And so with the, the use of these fire blankets, they can help solve a lot of problems. They can keep all this toxic smoke from entering into the atmosphere and also allow them to extinguish the fire and take these vehicles someplace safe where these batteries can cool all the way off to where now they're safe. And as time goes on, there's going to be more and more improvements to these technologies to help put these fires out. Electric vehicle news, should you be wary? EV car batteries are theoretically no less safe than the ones in our phone. As I stated earlier, so they're no less safe. If, you're, if you are afraid of electric vehicles because of the battery, you should be definitely afraid of your phone because you have your phone with you all the time. You're probably only with your car maybe a couple hours a day. Your phone is parked inside your house, probably in your bed. And you're, it's probably in your hand right now. <laughs> so I think that's enough evidence. And if you don't believe me, you're going to look for yourself. Anything that will support the claim that EV fires are more likely than, than gas or petrol cars, send it to me, please. I've been asking and no one's done it. No one sent me anything. Uh, so I beg of you, you know, in my comment section, please, any of these, any of you EV naysayers or people who are against EVs and one of the reasons that you you cite is because of the battery fire risk please send me a source please send me a source then no trust me bro it's not a credible source and I know that's what a lot of people are going to do just trust me bro so let me know what you think in the comment section and if you got value out of this uh, please like and subscribe I really appreciate it in order to get this out to more people but that's all I have for today. I'd like to thank you for joining me once again. And I can't wait to see you on the